We invite everyone to join us again, the End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministries. Our topic today is very important as far as I know. Our title is Personal Clause of Probation, Our Atmos, Personal Need for Preparing Christ's Coming. Clause of Probation is a biblical teaching found in Genesis to Revelation, both general and individual. But in the book of Matthew, chapter 24-25, the subject is so prominent that had been repeated after the discussions of the signs and warning of Jesus coming. Meaning to say, to Jesus, the subject is so important for him and for his people. The general clause of probation includes all earth's history, covering from the antediluvian world, nations or na nation, city or cities, group or groups of people, whether they acknowledge God or not. The same is true with personal close provision to a specific person or individual. The messages, the text, makes us consciously aware and alert of this very important biblical teaching, especially towards the end of time. So, we have here some texts that provide us that is really a prominent However, many have not looked at into it. In fact, I, I, I heard and I understand that this is one of the most neglected subject under discussion once we believe in Jesus Christ. And so, what we need to understand is that there's a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of area by which we need to understand this topic about clause of provision. For example, the receiving of the seal of God suggests clause provision. The receiving of the mark of the beast suggests also the closing of provision. Also, the sin against the Holy Spirit tells us, according to the Bible, really the clause of prohibition is there. So, many people are really preparing for Christ's coming. However, remember that Christ's coming is a long-range appointment. Whereas, the clause of probation happens any time. We have no control. And so we need a personal preparation for the coming of Christ because that is absolutely necessary. But Jesus repeatedly emphasized this subject in many of his discourses in the gospel. However, in the light of Bible truth, close of provision is one of the most urgent, utmost need, personal preparation than the Lord's coming. Reason, because many times the subject has been overlooked, neglected, or even taken for granted in lieu of the preparation for Jesus' personal return. The coming of Jesus has various signs and warnings delineated throughout the Bible. There are signs and warnings in the natural world, in religious world, in the business world, and political and military world. However, there is no signs that is so imminent and evident when our personal provision is closed. So, let's look at here in Matthew 24. The coming of Jesus is placed side by side with the clause of provision. So the day and the hour of Christ's coming and the clause of provision are inseparably linked 
and predicated together in Jesus' last day discourse. For example, Christ coming. Matthew 24, 39 says, The day and the hour no one knows. The close of provision of people, they did not know, Matthew 24, 39. In the second coming, it says, they do not know the hour, Matthew 24, 42. The close of provision, like a thief, no one knows, Matthew 24, 23. Again, second coming at that hour, no one expect him, Matthew 24, 44. In the same parable of the ten virgins, the close of probation mentioned the door was shut, Matthew 25, verse 10. On second coming, they know neither the day or the hour when Jesus come. Matthew 25, 13. This close, side by side, two topic in which we, when we understand, the most important is that Jesus mentions this topic after all the signs where the angels are gathering the elect and then he says, in the days of Noah, in the days of Noah, people were not, did not know. How come they did not know? So meaning to say, a person who is prepared the close of his personal probation, he at the same time prepared Christ's coming, not the reverse. So the signs of Christ's coming is overwhelming. Yet very few take the signs seriously to the heart, for most Christians that are worldlings are deceived by the attractiveness and the dazzling sounds and sights and smell of the world. As Ellen White predicted, predicted it long time ago, in Acts of the Apostles 478, the world has too much in our mind, yet the kingdom of heaven too little. And that's a sad fact. Because the world is so close to us. So that's the main reason why our thoughts are occupied by the things of the world and the kingdom of heaven is too little. But let, let us remember that the pendulum, let us remember that the pendulum in our lives, every year is still moving to man's weeks, days, to hours, and it seems the same, no difference at all, but above our heads, it's the pendulum that keep on swinging, ticking every day, every hour, every minute, and every second. Then suddenly, without notice, our life is over. No one knows exactly when this would happen, when our life will be over, and above all, the provision of salvation is closed. This is the utmost and the highest priority of personal preparation that every Christian must be ready for Christ's coming. Now let me explain the realities of life. Those who give Bible studies to me, many of them already died. And they said, let us prepare for Christ's coming. However, I, I, I learned later that the Bible, when we accept Jesus, the most important preparation we need to do is the closing of our personal probation. Why? Because this is the reality of life. James says, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a before that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. James 4.14. 4, That's our life. Temporary. Like a mist. But Jack Job, Job declared, Since his days are determined, the number of his months is with you. You have appointed his limits that you cannot pass. Job 14 verse 5. This is reality of life. Meaning to say, God already determined when we are born, when, when is the day we are going to die? 
Our days are determined. The number of our months are determined an hour. And you have appointed his limit that you cannot pass. This is the reality of life. We need to understand these realities. This is a normal life. But we need to understand also that life have a sudden events, accidents or disaster because God determined our years, our months, and hour in living in this planet Earth. However, there are factors that the Bible tells us. For example, for a man also does not know his time. Like a fish taken by a cruel net, like a bird caught in the snare, so the sons of men are snared an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. Ecclesiastes 9, 12. So meaning to say, God has given us, for example, I was given to live 75 years. However, God determined that I should live. That's a gift from God. However, accident, sudden events, disaster, that we have no control. It happened. That's why Solomon says again in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 6, Remember your Creator before the silver cord is lost, or the golden ball is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or wheel broken at the wheel. It, it, this, this text suggests consequence of being in a consequence of an old age, but also it tells us about disaster and accident that we do not know when it happened. That's the reality of life. Then our lifestyle also contribute to the realities. There are lifestyle that are good enough to contribute to the question for everyone to ponder in Ecclesiastes 7, why you should die before your time? Reason, because we have a lifestyle that makes our lives shorter. The way we live, the way we eat, the way we think, these are the realities. So we need to understand of these realities because It will help us that our life, there is a reality. We don't know when. And so, let's look at some of the Old Testament that happened. Every day, as I said, the pendulum, the clock, keep on ticking of our personal clause of provision, but there is surest thing in the Bible. Once we die, our probation closes. And so, let's look at the antediluvian world. Let's go back to Genesis because that's what Jesus says in Matthew 24. In the time of Noah. So the word of God presents there a general clause of provision, and yet this type of provision, the people do not know when it will happen that the door of mercy is forever closed. The antediluvian world was given 120 years, according to Genesis 6.3. So Noah preached 24-7, inviting, preaching, warning that there will be a flood. But people do not believe. They rejected Noah's message. And so Jesus says, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until that day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the sun be. Matthew 24, 38, 39. The verse is shocking. They do not know. What they do not know? It is not the coming of the flood because Noah is preaching it for 122 years. 
Even if they have ignored, rejected, and resisted the message, Noah continued to preach. And when the ark was completed and everything needed to be done, he invited the people for the last time. They did not know why the animals and the birds entered the ark. But they knew that they were separated from Noah when the door of the ark was closed. They did not know that when the Lord shut in him, Noah in the ark, Genesis 7, 16, they were also shut out and their provision already closed as the ark massive door was closed. They only knew that they were lost after seven years, seven days, when the flood came and destroyed them forever. Jesus mentioned also, like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, of the coming of the Son of God. What happened to Sodom? You know that it's incredible, horrible kind of life. The scripture says, as Sodom and Gomorrah, surrounding the city, and these are example suffering of vengeance of eternal fire, Jude 7. Ellen White says, let me read, the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah and other neighboring wicked cities of the plain did not know that their provision has come. On the night prior to the destruction, the city of the plain rioted in pleasure. Lot was derided for his fears and warning, but it was these coffers that perished in the plains. That very night, the door of mercy was closed forever to the wicked, careless inhabitants of Sodom. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 233. This is really the problem. It seems that life is normal, business, routinary activities, and yet the clock is ticking. God is looking on the ledger of heaven whether the cup of iniquity is full or almost full. Need to be done. Because, as I said earlier, God's love is endless. But his forbearance of sin and iniquity has a limit. So, simple things. Genesis 19.10, when the angels closed the door of the house of blood, it also symbolized the closing of provisions of these five cities. And in a matter of hours, they were eaten by fire of brimstone and sulfur. Let's go to the third. The city of Jerusalem. We have to understand the city was called in Exodus during the time of Exodus and according to Psalms 80 verse 8. At the beginning, this city is described as godly vine out of Egypt. Or to use Isaiah, he said, the choicest vines, but yet turn into a wild grapes. Isaiah 52, 5 verse 2. And he likens Israel as a royal virgin that become a harlot. Ezekiel 16, 4 verse 14 and 15. When Jesus arrived, the rulers and religious leaders many times were ready to destroy him. According to Matthew 26 verses 2 to 5, Luke 22 verse 2 and John 11:53. The whole picture was that people are keeping, doing all the, the normal way of life and even the religious activities in the sanctuary, but the religious experience is opposite to what they claim as people of God. So Jesus says in his final assessment of the city, let me read Luke 19. Verses 41 to 44. Now as he drew near, 
He saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you have known, even you, especially your day, these things make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment around you, surround you, close you on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will live in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. This is a saddest fact. The sad truth. Jesus was 30 years in the city of Jerusalem where all the activities of the religious ritual in the sanctuary, free figure is coming when he came. He was not accepted. They did not understand that this is, was the coming Messiah, the Redeemer, the servant of the Lord. It was just like Pilate. When Jesus was on trial, Jesus says, if you only know the truth. And Pilate says, what is the truth? John 18.38. This is a sad fact. Pilate was facing really the fullness of truth that is Jesus because Jesus claimed he is the truth, but Pilate did not see the truth. That's what happened in the city of Jerusalem. Let me read from Great Controversy, page 20 and 21. Ellen White says, The pleadings of his love had been despised, his counsel spurned, his warning ridicule, the hour of hope and pardon was past passing. The cup of God's long deferred wrath almost full. The cloud had been gathering through ages of apostasy and religion and rebellion and now black with black woe and about to burst upon the guilty people. He alone could save them from their impending fate and had been slighted, abused, rejected, was soon to be crucified. When Jesus should hang on the cross of Calvary, Israel's day as a nation, favored and blessed of God, would be ended. They do not know. And in fact, prophet Isaiah saw the final fall of Israel. He said, oh Israel, you are destroyed because of your iniquity. Hosea 39. Hosea 14 verse 1. As a type of the fall of Jerusalem and the king of Babylon, when King Nebuchadnezzar besieged the city in 586 BC. This is our problem. So we need to understand what happened here. Because what happened in Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, what happened in the antediluvian world, that Sodom and Gomorrah, neighboring city, and the city of Jerusalem, the people did not know that their provision was closed. Normal activities of life was going on, even religious life. No one knows. Sad to say, that it would happen in our planet before Jesus came. So there is a clause of provision. The global clause of provision. As a type of Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem. Foreshadow the destruction of the entire world when Jesus came. Ellen White says in Great Controversy 6.15, so when the irrevocable decision of the sanctuary has been pronounced, the destiny of the world has been forever fixed. The inhabitants of the earth will know it not. The forms of religion will be continued by people from whom the Spirit of God had been finally withdrawn. This is really a serious topic that we need to understand. It continues. So we find the next 40 years, city rulers and religious leaders and people in general continue their daily ritual. They did not know 
that their provision was already closed. And by AD 70, when the city was destroyed by the Roman, it was estimated 1.5 million Jews died. Only at the time they know that they were lost forever. And that is what we need to prepare. Because personal provision comes anytime. Comes anytime. According to Lynn White, God, not, God did not rebel when is the time of the close of provision. But when Jesus ceases to plead men, the cases of all are decided. Provision closes, the intercession ceases in heaven, the time finally comes suddenly upon all, and those who have neglected to purify their soul by obeying the truth are found sleeping. The stimulus to the church, volume 2 to 119. So meaning to say, suddenly, provision comes close unexpectedly. So meaning to say, we need to look at. Now we have looked at already the antediluvian world, Sodom and Gomorrah and other cities, the city of God who turned into a harlot because they rejected Jesus. Let's look at now to persons. Persons who believe in God and persons who do not believe in God where their provision closes. They did not know. Let's look at Balaam. You know already what happened to Balaam. And Balaam, he was a prophet. But inside in his heart, he wants really the treasure the money, the honor, and the ambition, and the position offered by Balak. And so, in his displeasure, according to Ellen White, after he reached his home, the controlling power of the Spirit of God left him, and he felt Presentment that his end was near and he exclaimed, Let me die with the death of the righteous. Let me, my last end, be like theirs. Numbers 23.10 But he has not chosen to live the life of a righteous and his destiny was fixed with the enemy of God. Very sad. He did not know. When he went back up there for Discussion that he will say no. Finally, when he went home in his mission, the Holy Spirit no longer talked to him. Why? But yet he continued. People believed that he was a prophet, but his provision was closed. The second classic was King Saul. King Saul. Okay? Saul was good at the beginning. First he was called to the throne. He was so humble and self-distrustful. Success made him self-confident. He was a prophet. He, his pride, his rebellion, his recklessness, and finally he was demon-possessed. And the Holy Spirit can no longer work for him. And when Saul chose to act independently of God, the Lord could no longer be on his guise, guide and was forced to set him aside. Patrick and Prophets 6.36 He continued to live. Still a king. Ruling the people. And yet, his provision was already closed. God cannot guide him anymore. What's the reason? Pride, rebellion, recklessness, and many others. Let's look at Felix, the prosecutor of Caesarea. Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, and Paul was there giving a witness. However, according to the text, in Acts 24, 22 to 26, 
Actually, Felix wanted to release Paul of all his charges, so long as money. Because verse 26 says, Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given to him by Paul that he might release him. Bribery. That's why he said, Oh, if I have convenient time, come. The convenient time means if the bribe is ready. And let's see what happened. According to Ellen White, her comments on Acts 24, 25. That he slighted his last offer of mercy. Never was he to receive another call from God. Acts of the Apostles 4, 27. Here we understand. And still a creator of Caesarea. Let's go to another person. The last Herod. King Agrippa. The Lord opened the door for him, gave him a lot of life and light. And yet, when Paul spoke to him, Paul says, I think myself happy King Agrippa because today I will answer for myself before you concerning all the things which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are an expert in all custom and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. Acts 26 verse, verses 2 and, 2 and 3. However, King Agrippa Put aside the proper mercy, refusing to accept the cross of the crucified Redeemer, and his provision was closed. Acts of the Apostles 4.38. It's very sad. Continue living. Did not know their provision was closed. And in fact, Jesus made a parable. In Luke 12, 16 to 19, that there was a rich man. And he produced his goods were so much. And then the man said, the ground of a certain man was yielded plentifully. And he taught himself, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will I store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Saul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take a eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy life. Verse 20, verse 20 says, but God said to him, fall this night. Your soul will be required of you, then whose will those things which you have provided? Loss, loss of provision. My brothers and sisters, the book of Revelation mentions, 15 verse 6, that the temple was filled with smoke, from the glory of God and from his power. No one was able to enter the temple till the past seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. No more magician for sinners. Jesus no longer act as a high priest to magician sinner and he changes his clothes into the clothes of the kings of kings. And yet, what do we understand? What we understand is that the book of Revelation mentions only the character. Revelation 22, 11, our famous, the famous unknown verse in the Bible about close of provision. Because the status of moral character is fixed forever when provision is closed. So John declared, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And who is holy, let him be holy still. 
No more opportunity. Opportunity just ahead, but opportunity missed and was taken. Lost. Good if you are found. My brothers and sisters, it's incredible. We need to look at what happened. Because every now and then, I remember one of my church members, I visited him every now and then. Even I bring the mission president. And I said, Elder, let us visit this brother because, you know, he's not coming to church. We went there. And in fact, he told me, Pastor, I'm not afraid of the mission president. I, saw, I said, brother, I'm not bringing him that you make you afraid. But we are appealing you to come. We are appealing you to come. Come back. He promised. That was November. He said, next year, I will return to the church. He was a successful canvasser. However, he met his friends and they have a party and while they got drunk he was killed sad to say because we do not know when God is giving us the gift determined number of years and months but the accidents the unprecedented events disaster that would happen our lifestyle those really are need to be understood that our personal clause of probation we need to prepare because we do not know what happened the next hour the next day rather than because when we when we are prepared for our clause of probation then it, that is automatic that we are prepared for Jesus coming before I end let me tell you a story real story of an elder, of a leader, of a church. I was new Adventist at the time. He backslided and led a group of people to get El Gatin lands and build houses. Officers of the union told him, please come back, brother. And he said, I will come next year. December 25, men, armed men, shoot him between his eyes, and he was dead. Of all the topic in the Bible, close of provision must be taken seriously by everyone. Let us not be complacent. We do not know when. Preparation for Christ's coming. We need that. We need to prepare for that. But we need to prepare because our provision, we do not know. Our life is a mist. It's a before we appear today, tomorrow, we are gone. But when we are prepared, the coming of Jesus, even we wait in the grave, we are already prepared. Because, as Jesus says, the world will that they will never know when is the provision close. The individual never also know his provision or her provision is close. So to end, let's go back to Jesus. Jesus on Noah's lessons of close provision. Noah, according to the book of Hebrews, by faith, Noah. Being divinely warned of things not seen. Moved with a godly fear, prepared the ark for saving of his household. By which he condemned the world and become heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Hebrews eleven seven. And Ellen White comments a very, very beautiful comment. 
She said that Noah invested everything in the ark. My brothers and sisters, where you are investing your means in this world, because Noah invested everything he had in the ark, although there was no droplet of rain, his work was evidenced by his faith, even things he had not seen. But the race of the antediluvian world who are mocking him that he was deluded. Those people invested in the rainy days and that's the flood and all of them perish. Please learn out of this lesson because Jesus repeatedly says we need side by side prepare for his coming and prepare also for the close of provision personal. Two should go together. But one preparation for a close of probation is that it should not be reversed, preparing Christ's coming and not preparing the close of probation. May the Lord bless us that anybody who can understand and live these messages we have should prepare ourselves because our personal close of probation is the utmost Preparation for Christ's coming. Are you personally ready for the clause of provision? When you are ready, you are ready for Christ's coming. This is my prayer.